So she focuses her research on the translation of science into public, and she's really, really good at it. Um, among her most recent works are the Cabaret on Adaptive Management of Coastal Ecosystems, it's a short thing, um, which has been formed at over two dozen local, regional, and national science conferences, and the Katrina Project, a dramatic piece based on over 90 interviews um, that she conducted in New Orleans and Mississippi Delta following Hurricane Katrina. So today, or last year, she, she gave us a two-day series on public speaking, as some of you might remember, I think two of you, Christina and Bill, were here last year. And you, were you last year? Mm -hmm. um, and so this year, we decided to incorporate some leadership um, skills, because that's one of the main things we want you guys to take away from the Energy Fellows Program. So today, she'll be focusing on leadership, and then next Tuesday, same time, same place, we'll be doing public speaking. And you can want them to present. Yes. And, uh, right. so of course. We'll talk about that. Of course. Because it's so much fun, right? <laughs> and so thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. Um, it's it's kind of <laughs> and I, can I it's too early in the morning. Right? <laughs> <laughs> can I find you with two things? You, you certainly set may. the stage. Um, the conflict management and leadership came up partly because of the, the issues that Rachel and I um, face every day in the energy arena. There's so much, there's so much interest in energy right now, and there's um, a lot of resources being put into the sector, and that means that there are inevitably conflicts where people are fighting over big chunks of money. So we thought the whole um, issue of how do you address these conflicts in a productive fashion is something that's really important for you to start to get a taste of. And I think about our colleague, not our colleague, our, yeah, well, our colleague Abigail Anthony, who graduated from the iGRID program where they focused on um, both deep deep disciplinary knowledge and then a, an ability to work with people from all different sectors. And she is now out working in the energy arena. And I've been very impressed at her ability to confront people um, in a, a way that forces the issues to, to the forefront without being I mean, too antagonistic. So that's a, a skill that takes some practice. That's one thing. And then on the second thing, on the public speaking aspect, I think all of you are going to be involved in the community initiative with EPA where Judith, we're actually partnering with National Grid to drive people to um, various efficiency programs. So we thought if we could focus our, our public speaking on what you'll be doing when you might knock on people's doors or address a leader in so it, given that particular thing, one of the things that I just want to say quickly, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later though, is um, I don't necessarily want you to think about doing public speaking from the perspective of um, I have a PowerPoint and I'm going to get up and talk to all of you because from what I understood in terms of what everybody's going to be doing, it isn't necessarily that format. You know, it's engaging one-on-one, -on -one, or it's engaging with a few people at a time, that sort of thing. So um, I thought it would be interesting for you to pick a particular scenario in which you say, I'm just talking to one person. This is what I'm doing. I'm trying to, my objective is to achieve the following with this person. And it may very well be just to form a relationship. That may be your goal on that given occasion. Or it may very well be that you want to, and by form a relationship, I mean build a sense of trust, build a sense of um, uh, recognition of your competence, things of that sort, which are really the important issues that you want to be concerned with when you're meeting somebody for the first time. So um, I, I want to get a little more detail about that later before we break up today so that you can then make your own choice about what you want to present and how you're going to present it. So it may not be that you're standing up here in front of everybody, you know, doing, doing the PowerPoint dance. Okay, and you're about to see me use PowerPoint in a way that um, most people would tell you is not appropriate. Um, and I will tell you is appropriate, because I'm right. That's <laughs> <laughs> just the way it starts. You know? um, anyway, I, it's always good to have a little confidence, you know, it never hurts. A couple of things about, about leadership and about the whole panoply of leadership, you know, what falls under leadership. One of the things that's important to remember is that you can't have leadership if you don't have followership. No, you simply can't. Um, and also, people tend to think of leadership as something that is extremely hierarchical, and they tend to think of it as something that is um, uh, very much about 
uh, working your way through the ranks and then you achieve a particular position that is in the upper pinnacle of, uh, you know, of a given organization and that's when you're a leader. Now, and the fact of the matter is that leadership is something that in its everyday form is really very, um, it's very amorphous. It's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's um, something that, that mutates constantly from one form to another. There's an evolutionary process that occurs with leadership and so on. Uh, and can you teach people to have leadership skills? Absolutely. I, I, I firmly believe that. Now, some people, just as there are those of you who are more likely to be singers than others, not because you um, necessarily decide to be a singer, but because when you were born, you were physio physiologically given certain things, certain length and width of vocal cords, certain resonating capacity within your physiological structure, your skeletal structure, you know? Um, you can't make that be there if it's not there. There's nothing you can do about that, okay? Um, it's just the way it is. What you can do, however, is if you have the capacity um, to sing, you can then train yourself to use those things to their fullest capacity. Everybody understands that in terms of things like athletics and so on and so forth. 